Soundstripe. Hi, I'm Susanna. Welcome to the Mapro Masterclass. Today, I'm speaking with Alex Koch de Guren. Alex has come to spend two days with us and we're visiting a number of properties and meeting with a number of uh, clients, client buyers and client vendors uh, to catch up on the current position of the market. Um, what sort of nationalities do you think um, are predominantly looking here in the area? Well, I think the British market is still very strong. Um, and again, when you come back to holiday markets, I would say that we traditionally always felt that the, the British market would probably be the one to focus on. Now I sit in London, but my clients are not British. You know, my clients are from all over the world. You know, luckily, with a big network, you know, we can access all that network and try and get in front of clients in some of the other key centres that we're seeing interest coming in from. So it's a lot of the expats coming in from the Middle East, so from Dubai, we see people starting to come here. And I, when I say here, I'm talking about Portugal generally. Uh, so not just the Golden Triangle, but if you look at Portugal generally, the interest, for example, in the Lisbon market, which is a new market for us where actually a lot of that's coming out of the US, out of China, out of South Africa, uh, and out of Dubai. But that's beginning to come down here as well into the Algarve and into the Golden Triangle. And I think, I mean, probably the major players still are the British, probably still are um, Northern European belt. So those people who are looking for sunshine, quality of life, you know, what we don't get sadly in the UK, uh, this is what you're getting here. Uh, and actually, if you're looking for accessibility, you know, a lot of our clients are looking to move here, the chances are they're at an age where they've got kids living back in the UK who maybe are having kids themselves. So they want to be close to the grandkids or kids or their own kids. So that accessibility, you know, Faro Airport now is so much more advanced than when it was when we first lived here. I think there was one flight a week to London. I mean, it was just crazy. So, you know, you look at that now and you think, well, actually, there are so many opportunities for you to fly back to Northern Europe. You can see why it's quite easy for that flow to come from Northern Europe. Very much so. And um, we hope that will keep improving um, from everywhere in Europe and yeah. outside. Um, for us, we've also noticed, um, yes, of course, predominantly still British uh, buyers, without a shadow of a doubt. Um, the tax implications or the tax benefits are, are very, very um, interesting to them. But also in terms of the European buyers, we've seen a lot of um, the Dutch mm -hmm. coming up quite strongly, the Belgians, um, the Irish seem to be um, uh, looking in again to the market. And of course, you know, further afield, um, the Americans actually um, are, are finding an interest in Portugal. Portugal in general for the Americans, I think, but um, a lot of uh, Florida-based um, Americans or even Europeans that have gone to um, the US seem to be coming back yeah. um, for this lifestyle environment. I think the one thing that you, you whichever country you're looking at, where we look forward, you know, where's the next country going to come from? You know, people are so fleet of foot nowadays. Uh, if there is a concern in your home country as to where you should be, if there's a political concern, taxation concern, uh, any kind of instability, people look for somewhere else to go and they want to be fleet of foot. What I've noticed in Portugal is that people who maybe looked at this market for, as a holiday home are now saying, actually what I'd like to do is I'd like to buy a holiday home here and if something goes wrong in my home country, so in the UK, whether we have a very high taxation place, Labour government come into power or something like that, that will give them the opportunity that they can move very quickly because they already have their property. So it's the best of both worlds. So they're looking for that, so that, that shortfall. And I look after the Swiss market for my Frank as well as Portugal. And people are doing that in Switzerland and in Portugal. It's not, it's not an uncommon thing. We did a study on the number of French buyers looking into London the day that Monsieur Hollande came into power. And we saw, we saw three or four different spikes during the period of his, his tenancy and as he approached. And we tracked it very carefully for the amount of interest coming out of Paris looking onto our website for London property. And it was just extreme how quickly people were like, nope, okay, I'm not happy with this, I'm leaving. Uh, and they could move straight away. So it, it will have an impact on this market. Very different uh, areas, Switzerland and Portugal. Something so organized. Yeah, well, you'd say that, but it's still, it, there, there is a tax advantage to yes, both. Yes, totally. So people consider both. It's a safe environment. They're both safe environments. 
Um, yes, you're right, Swiss. This is very different into a different but portion. But actually, a lot of but similarities. There are similarities, yeah, uh, and uh, I mean, probably less so five years ago, but now more increasingly so. Yeah, very, very interesting. Thank you for joining us, Alex. Thank you for joining us in our first masterclass. I look forward to seeing you more often and sharing more news about the Portuguese property market.